back in the day, we used to rack paint. So um, Mood would have showed me, you know, the, the ropes on that. <laughs> the ways to um, go, yes. So we had to get paint any way we could. And it was as expensive as it is then as it is now for mm. a young kid. So, um, yeah, you can only think what people would go through to get paint. But mm. it's quite, quite a fun time growing up in London. And, uh, yeah, just meeting different writers and seeing how other people paint. It you say be... fun, but it's fucking intense. Like, yeah, when well, we hear stories, it's fucking intense. It is intense. intense. London is intense. It was scary. Um, like, it sounds, it sounds heavy. It's intense. Late 90s, early yeah. noughties, heavy. You know, I got beaten up with a hockey stick before. Did uh, you? After school. And it, it happened on the train station, broad day. Some other kids did it with a like, hockey stick, some like, Puerto Rican kids. And then, like, yeah, no one did anything. They were just too scared. Killer Keller podcast. Killer Keller official dot com. Street Culture TV. Instagram UK frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast live and direct, central London, in fact on location, I'll serve it up in a minute. Big shout out to all the sharers and carers, people who have been clocking from the jump, whole tight met inside the place. We are we're literally in the heart of it right now, we are in uh, Trellick Tower, um, for all uh, case and point, this is really the place where things are happening and if you ain't seeing... What's going on behind? It's going everywhere right now. Our sponsors, the mighty GK Nifty Heads, have a massive 100,000 play to earn NFTs to give away to the streets. Just hit the link in the description or go to gkniftyheads.com and get ready for Hoddle Wars Summer 2024. Inside the house, I've got a good friend of mine who's been uh, supporting the podcast from a very early stage uh, and is here with us now. The mighty Dems in the building. Yes, yes, Keller. <laughs> How are you? Hey Dems, aka Demographics. Yeah, put, keep that up, would you, brother? Um, yeah, just travelled down today from Norwich. Uh, came to take part in the um, throw-up battle. So yeah. it was a 10, a ten minute battle, and we just had to pick whatever colours. Absolutely had yeah, it. Yeah, and um, it was the pressure was on, you know, like 10 minutes flies by, and mm. you're just thinking, you just got to get it out like the can. Go, 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 go. Yeah, 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 it's just a mad rush. And um, it was good fun, actually, yeah. like just seeing what you could do under pressure. Um, and it was, yeah, nice to be a part of that. And also been painting today and we've been blessed with the sunshine. Oh, man. Beautiful sunshine. We don't normally get this in autumn. It's perfect, isn't it? Yeah. And for those of you who don't know, the, uh, the battle will be up uh, over the weekend. So good luck with that. Uh, a winner takes all, as it were. Yeah, so it's going to be on Street Culture, right? Yeah. That's it, Street yeah. Culture TV, so television. if you're not familiar, I'd definitely check that out. Yeah, 100 you know Dude, that. do you want a job? Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking great. Um, how did that differentiate from your normal outgoings? Back in the day, especially when throw-ups were, uh, you know, part well, of your daily yeah, course. Back in the day, you know, you had to paint fast uh, to get your work up on the, the wall and you might be at a place where you've only got 10 minutes. Mm. So, That's yeah. all you got. So if you're like dedicated, a dedicated writer should be able to handle that pressure, mm. definitely. So mm. like if you've got experience in that, yeah, you'll excel in that area. Now, some of you may have seen a podcast with Dems before, because of course he comes from good pedigree, don't you? From back in the day and, <laughs> yeah, and so, some. Yeah, I grew up in South London, uh, Brixton and Shretham, and uh, yeah, just went to school there, but moved out to Hertfordshire later on mm. where I started doing my community art that's right and it's more like street art murals for councils and things like that mm. so I kind of transitioned from graffiti art into uh, the kind of public murals that's sort of more acceptable these days now it's sort of it's, it's making the street art more acceptable yeah, and appealing now to everyone. How important is that for you to have the lineage of, of graffiti I, as your background? I think, obviously, it's important, but not everybody has that. No. And I don't think, like, just because you haven't got that background that you shouldn't try to be a street artist and do street art. It, that's for everyone. Art is for everyone. So, yeah, if you've got that drive, just do what you can do, isn't it? It's about having fun mm. with the, the medium, which is the... 
the tools of the culture, the spray paints. Mm. And um, if you can make it work, then yeah, go for it. Yeah, man. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just go by an example of like what happened there with the with the dub battle. The speed in which you threw things up was crazy. I mean, there's got to be there's got to be heritage within that, you know, to yeah, know, yeah. So to, know to, to be able to differentiate as well. Yeah, you need to be like you, you've got it in your mind you've, what you're going to do. So um, you use a fat cap and you just get it on the wall as quickly as possible and just fill in as much area as possible mm. and then throw on your outline and it's what you do on the streets. That's the sort of thing, that, that's the process, isn't it? So mm. it's about having that background in that and, and just getting it on the wall. And uh, I have taken that street knowledge into my murals. I always like to paint fast, but I've learned different techniques over the years. Mm. Um, and, and I studied art, so it's not like... I don't have a clue what I'm doing. I, mm. I know about light and shades and tones yeah. and all of that. So that all feeds into what I'm doing now as a street artist, mural artist. You don't really and get given that qualification in graph, do you? No, I mean no. So with graph, you that comes from experience. So I grew up and I used to paint with like older graffiti writers and I aspired to be like um, the Vop crew, Shine mm. and Quest and Rough and Stylo Mir, oh. and all of those people. Yeah, so... I came from a culturally diverse place with a lot to look at mm. and, uh, and I was inspired by what I was seeing while I was growing up in London. But do you and think I, people that people that see, like, Vop's a great example of, from back in the day, that where you'd see, like, full body productions? Yeah, yeah. You know, do you think a lot of, do you think a lot of writers, I mean, how do they, how do they repurpose that into their work? Do you think a lot of people give it enough emphasis? Do you think they look into it that deeply? I think all street artists, mural artists, graffiti artists do think deeply about what they're doing. Um, they have to have some sort of knowledge of the art and that differentiates somebody like a toy from somebody who's more experienced. Mm. And it just comes with experience. Mm. The more you use the spray paints and the more you look at art and let that feed in and influence what you're doing, the more you're going to develop as an artist yeah. and a graffiti artist. So... It all ties together, so... Yeah. But it's about can, zoning in, isn't yeah, it? It's yeah, about zoning you can, in. You can transition from doing graffiti into artwork because it's an art form in itself anyway. Yeah, yeah that's right. Well, it's super um, important because if you, don't, if you don't look at... And it's about pushing the, the, yeah. the envelope of what you So you for me, do, right? the reason why I pushed in that direction was I had responsibilities, I've got family, I've got a child and sort of, I can't run around doing it on the streets, you know what I mean? Mm. I, I love doing it, mm. but now I want to try and, you know, make some money from it and then pay my bills. And I think that's what's important in life is... How do you stop yourself from doing it? How do you stop yourself from that, that instinct of, oh, fuck, you know, I've had a bad day. It's been a really horrible day. I'm going to yeah. go, go and fucking absolutely pace the fucking Oh, OK, yeah, I see what you're hometown. saying there. Yeah, um, I don't get that need anymore. That's a different part of my life. Really? So, yeah, my life has gone through stages. I'm, like, at a stage in my life where I don't... It doesn't... I don't want to be up all night. Mm. Um, as much as it's exciting and, like, painting a train and things like that, like, that doesn't really... That's not me anymore. Mm. Like, it's, I've moved Have on. Have you really, like, drawn a... Yeah, I've drawn a line, and it's all about art and just having fun and enjoying life. So... Mm. That's what I'm doing. I'm trying to enjoy my life. And I think that's the key. If you're doing something that you enjoy, yeah, then yeah. when you're working, it's not really working. And, uh, yeah, you're just having fun. So It's like Tyson. He, he's, he once quoted, um, a good boxer is a happy boxer. Exactly. You've got to be happy at what you do. And then you're not a prisoner. Yeah. You're, not, you're not like going to work thinking, oh, I've got to clock in, clock out. Yeah. You know, I, I live a life where... I can choose what I want to do every day. Mm. Um, yes, I might not have money all the time. So sometimes there might be times where it's a dry spell or whatever. And a struggle, you, yeah. yeah. And But then it comes again. So you have to have kind of a belief in yourself and make enough in those times to sort of get you by. You know well, let's, mean? let's zoom in on that because I think for a lot of people that aspire to any level of, you know, excelling from the street to, to more corporate or you yeah. know happier place like how how do you define that how do you how, 
on those days where you're having the hardest of times because that's that's where everyone literally leans to graffiti and yeah. you know just to get some well, sort of energy out of them. But so don't get do you... me wrong, this world is messed up and I have the same issues and thoughts that everybody else has about what's going on in society and politics mm. and all of that. But I when I do my art, it's a way for me to escape that and just to zone into what I'm doing, mm. focus. Um and I just don't, I just want to live my life and be happy. I don't want to know about all the badness yeah, that's happening. Yeah. Because yeah. um, that's not our news. And that's the other thing. I like going, I like exercising now. I've lost weight. Been going to yeah, the gym. Oh, yeah, I've got to big it up. Because so, I'll tell you what, my man, you, you are, you, every time I see you, stronger, 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 stronger. Yeah. And um, that's also focus and, and discipline. Like, if you don't have discipline in yourself, then you just your mind's going to wander and you're going to get caught up in other stuff that's mm. distractions mm. from where you want to get to so like sometimes i've got to do boring stuff like uh committee meetings i'm a chairman of a community center yo and, uh, i love it really like Friday wow night i was doing a committee meeting and uh you know you got to do some things like that sometimes to sort of move up the ladder and get a position in the community and be doing stuff. So. This is mad. The DPM, the, the fucking Dems inside the house. And you've, you've, this is, it's like a new forecast in which you're, you know, you're, yeah. you're approaching life. Yeah. So I've never had to do a chairman role of a community centre. I was just like, yeah, the, the opportunity was in front of me. Mm. Somebody was stepping down because of the stress of the role and they, they didn't want it anymore. And you're like, I'll take that. I'll, I'll just that. take that. And like, yeah, see how where it goes, isn't it? You can't. There's no harm in it. I've yeah. never been a chairman before, but I'm enjoying it. Chairman, <laughs> and, uh, you see? So, uh, wow. It's about making certain contacts. I think within communities, if you're going to do a community yeah, arts yeah. Uh, career, you need to have contacts and be networking and stuff like that. So you have to be quite driven and motivated and be able to. Uh, switch over your character as well yeah. like because I can't be talking to councillors as dirty Dems mm. I'm demographics mm. so although I do both I like to have two different uh, etiquettes like, what's the mindset of that because I know exactly where you're coming from I think there's different heads for different circumstances yeah. so you have to put your professional head on yeah and especially when you're dealing with like corporation jobs and mm. other other clients. How sharp do you have to? How sharp do you have to? You know, how sharp do you have to go with your knife as far as that's concerned? Because there's, so, there's a lot of talk and the way that you have to approach things. Yeah, is very you different, have right? to have invoices. You have to be emailing people, um, showing um, design work. So you've got to do your graphic design on maybe an iPad and Procreate and. And, and that's useful because if a client doesn't like something, you can just delete it out mm. of it and change it. So, whereas back in the day, you'd have to hand draw stuff to yeah, show yeah, people. Yeah. It's, it was yeah. a long process. It was a work of art. black books. Yeah, black books is a work of art in themselves. And um, sketching, that's, that's a piece of art. So, uh, the technology has sped things up in that area. Mm. And you've got Google Drive and Share and all of that stuff. Like, I mean, you're so, embracing it. You're embracing everything. Yeah, you got that you got things Bruce Lee you. said be like water, and that's what I'm trying to be is just keep flowing mm. and adapting to where life is taking me, and uh, yeah, just taking the opportunities that are there. Mm. I mean, you're in the mix a lot. We're here, Trellick. Pieces up. We'll definitely get a video of that. Um, how much of how much of this social space influence? Because, like you were saying, you've moved. You, you're you're moving into other pastures, but of course, when you come back to ground zero and you're you're a happy writer. Yeah, you that's catch it. you I, catch a loads of influence. I, you know, I get the same depressive depressive thoughts that other people get, uh, but it's about turning it. From a positive, from a negative into a positive, mm. so taking a positive away from everything. Mm. Like even if you get like a parking ticket or whatever, which could happen. Mm. I've had a brilliant day, so yeah, that's the positive part of it. Yeah, and but it's also being re reactive as well. Yeah. It's being reactive. So right? don't don't react to the negative. Don't reach for a fucking drink. Because mm. you don't drink anymore, do you? Well, no, I don't really drink. I do have a vice. I do smoke 
um, but I'm trying to stop that and be more, mm. you know, like healthy. I'm making more healthy choices with the food that I eat. Like what you consume is mm. important. Uh, but that even that's so hard because if you go to the market, it's hard to pick the right stuff. So, of course, yeah. Um, but yeah, whereas before I was very reckless, mm. I was a young person and I just just didn't care about anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now it's about self care. Yeah, it's definitely about that because I definitely neglected my health. Mm. Um, and it's so important. I think health is worth more well, than money. It comes back to you, doesn't it? It comes back to yeah, you. Yeah, so, yeah. like, being an older person now, like, I've reflected on things. I'm more of a spiritual person now. Mm. Um, and, yeah, money's not the most important thing, you know? As yeah. long as you can manage and you can pay your bills and get by but still enjoy what you're doing, you're doing mm. all right. So that's the way I look at it. At this point, I want to... R.I.P. Mood, because that was your boy. And if you haven't checked the podcast, that's certainly uh, one to check out from previous uh, conversations. Um, on reflection, of course, this is, a deep, this is a deep one. On reflection, you know, as a man that passed at such an early stage in his life, I mean, is there, is there a lot of bittersweet where that's concerned for you? Where yeah, it's so honoring, if, almost honoring the, the Obviously, the fallen. yeah, like, mood is a big part because... I think he influenced me heavily when I was younger. Um, and if he was alive, he would be here today, 100%. Mm. Mm. Um, he'd definitely be doing a big mood dub somewhere. Yeah. Same with Powell. Yeah, rest all in of peace, Powell. Yeah. Um, I mean, these were all people that you were closely associated yeah, with close in an era. friends. And that's the thing, you can't take life for granted because the tomorrow is not promised. So, yeah, you just got to try and make every day count yeah. and do your best piece your best street art and just be grateful that you've got another day to try. Mm. Yeah. In, in 2024, the, the, the lines are often blurred with street art and graffiti just for a simple use of a, a medium like spray paint. It's really interesting that the, 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 um, the polarization mm. of, of so what, that, what, that, what those two words mean. Who would have thought that art. car paint would have been used to paint all sorts of things. Controversially so, right? Yeah, so the, the, the discovery of that, of just applying paint to the surface, that's where it all started. Yeah. And um, yeah, now there's incredible stuff happening. <laughs> Crazy. And uh, the brands are getting better. You know, I've got no bias to any brand, so if anybody's out there that wants to sponsor me, there you get go. in touch. There you go. Um, but yeah, the paint is definitely improving. Yeah. Back in the day, Back in the day, we used to rack paint. So um, Mood would have showed me, you know, the, the ropes on that. <laughs> the ways to um, go, yes. So we had to get paint any way we could. And it was as expensive as it is then as it is now for mm. a young kid. So, um, yeah, you can only think what people would go through to get paint. But mm. it was quite, quite a fun time growing up in London. And... Uh, yeah, just meeting different writers and seeing how other people paint. It you say be... fun, but it's fucking intense. Like, yeah, when, I, when well, you hear stories, it's fucking intense. It is intense. intense. Well, London is intense. It was intense. scary. Um, like, it sounds, it sounds heavy. It's intense. Late 90s, early yeah. noughties, heavy. You know, I got beaten up with a hockey stick before. Did you? Uh, after school. And it, it happened on the train station, broad day. Some other kids did it with, like, hockey sticks. Some, like, Puerto Rican kids. And then, like... Yeah, no one did anything. They were just too scared. But anyway, that's the sort of environment London is. And it's even worse nowadays. You're hearing about stuff on the news all the yeah. time. Knife crime. I've got a friend, Cy Philly. So shout out Cy Philly in Luton. Oh, hold tight, um, Cy Philly. He's, he's doing a um, uh, knife crime campaign. So big up on that. Yeah, big that. up that. Um, and, you know, it's good to see people talking about knife crime because it's stupid. Like having a weapon... And what, killing, taking away someone's life over what? Mm. Is it shot in, like, some, like drugs or what? It's, it's, everybody's in the same boat, yeah, trying to get out of poverty, yeah. Let's work together. Yeah, so 100%. So people need to work together and not be killing each other and fighting yeah. over stupid stuff. Yeah. Um, Graffiti was a gateway to a lot of exploitive mm, like stuff. Like hip-hop. Hip-hop originally was 
the platform for the communities and to bring people together mm. from everywhere. Mm. And um, yeah, now it seems like it's been diluted or changed into something that's all about mm. selling stuff. Yeah. Um, not, not. Which sends not a, building, a different kind of yeah. message of building communities. And, and, and people are getting into all that like music and everything uh, to better themselves yeah. um, and maybe putting on personas and so people can talk about it. But really you need to like grow up and taking someone else's life is just child. It's like a, it's, it's, it's a, unthinkable. It's <laughs> a low vibrational frequency to mm. be on, man. Yeah. You need to be thinking about how you can better the world. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I'm with that. Like at the end of the day, we're all one, mm. one energy, yeah? So why are we just destroying ourselves? Yeah. So um, we need to be working together for that God power. Yeah. And that, this is something I wanted to talk about with the graffiti scene and the street art scene. Talk um, to me. So I've worked for clients myself directly and that's been fine. I know what I'm doing with that. Mm. If there's a problem with payment, then yeah, fine, I'll settle that legally, whatever. Um, but I find there's companies now that are like agencies for graffiti artists and, you know, we can all sort of say, you know, yeah, let's work for them. We'll get paid and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But those, those big companies that are dealing with the bigger clients up there, um, they're, they're relying on the talent of the people, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah? Mm -hmm. So we have the talent. Why not work together? And just, like, if, if you've got a big commission going on over your ends and you need help with it, just holler me. And then vice versa, if I've got a big commission going on and I need help, I'll holler at the people that I think... You think, think it's a dispute think, there? You think there's... think that you can help. It's, there's no dispute. I just think people should work together. Yeah. Um, and then, like, I don't know, I feel like I had no problem until recently where I've been working for, like, a company called Paint Freaks. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I went to school with Nick Chax. Okay. So there was, like, we knew each other from, from back, back in the, in the day. day. Yeah, Brit right. school. So it's personal, you know. If, if I agree, like, a day rate with you and it's agreed... Then, then you should honour that and pay that agreed day rate. Right. You know, um, and that just didn't happen. Like right. previously, like yeah, fine, I got paid, but I'd have to like kind of keep pestering to get paid, and I don't like that. Like I've done the work, just mm. pay pay for the work that I've done. So anyway, I did this last one, and we agreed the day rate, and I got paid basically half, and told that he was still waiting for uh for that for his company to be paid mm -hmm. but at the same time bragging about how he's living in italy and living the life do you know what i mean like you don't right. need to do that if you're making that much money you don't need to brag about it and then not pay your workers so you just don't you, know? you, you, you didn't get paid and you feel so like, yeah i paid yeah. half and and basically i'm not going to work for paint freaks uh, illuminations whatever they're called now a lot of businesses will shut down and, and then start up again. So mm. uh, if you are working for certain companies, do your background checks, company's house, see if they've been liquidated, mm. that sort of thing, you know? Because a lot of people will owe money to people and then just shut down shop and not pay pay the workers. Right. So they mess up a lot of people's lives in the process. Yeah, yeah. But it's all about bettering themselves. Yeah. For, for money got you. and I think that's pretty low man mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So chairman of the board here telling, as, you, telling it like it is if, especially like if we went to school together yeah. do you know what I mean that's a personal it's a thing, principle man. yeah and I I'm a I'm a different person now I deal with things differently and um, yeah I just I just think that's pretty low and I, I wouldn't work for paint freaks again so as, as we move into this next generation of um, like you say going into more corporate lanes and yeah yeah so, so you, i've got you, yeah. i've got people approaching me now for you know um chain franchises so mm. there might be one restaurant there one restaurant there mm -hmm. and things like that so 
it's not like I don't know how to operate in a professional manner. Yeah, yeah. I don't need to work for other agencies. Mm. I can manage on my own. And I think you need to question yourself if you're an artist and you can't build your own name. You have to work for someone else and get the work from somewhere else. What happens when they drop you? What are you going to do then? Yeah. So I think that's really important because the honour of your own name there, you know, it's not easy, man. Like, no. we do it with music, we do it with everything. It's about throwing so and, much at And the it wall. does happen, you know. People will have their own personal opinions of you. And the, the higher up you get or the better you get at something, the more haters you get and the more people hating on you, talking bad. And mm. it's like you've got to just put up with it. And, and it comes with the territory of trying to succeed mm. and just be the best you can. Yeah. Like, that's all I'm trying to do is... Yeah. I keep trying to be better than yesterday and I look at other people and think, oh, yeah, I want to be like that. Mm. So I get inspired by people and it's a nice feeling knowing that I'm inspiring people and I, I do workshops, so kids' workshops and stuff like that. Mm. And they're really popular. So I did a string of workshops in Hertfordshire over the summer and uh, all the kids came and it was a free event and they got to spray their own canvases and use markers and I'll do their names in a graffiti style lettering and they'd fill them <laughs> in and sick, stuff. Yeah. And then they've got something to take home and remember you or remember the workshop yeah. by. So it's about inspiring people to get into art and to pick up a can and have a go. So it's incredible. It's the next generation, you know, we, we need to be teaching the new generations and but also in business stuff. as well. Yeah. And showing them how to do business. Because yeah. that was not never shown to me. No. You, you think, like, I've come from South London growing up. I don't know a thing about business. Mm. I've just sort of had to figure it out. Working it out as yeah. you go. I think and, that goes being, for all of us, man. Yeah, just being self-employed. Um, just working for myself. That's, yeah. that's what I did. I had no one to show me that that was the way. I just chose that path of... Mm trying to work for myself yeah and that was from coming off the job center yeah. so i was signing on and they said i had to do a business startup and then i yeah i, I, I got a business mentor and set up a website made some business cards had a business plan and just started contacting people and just go ham just yeah go just in. go for it and um yeah like i didn't have a clue what i was doing yeah and but yeah. We're pushing the envelope yeah. and going that extra step. It's just a really interesting conversation. You know, we we're in the heart of it here in, in Trellick. And, you know, of course, everyone comes in to paint for their own reasons. The same way they go to a pub, it's for their own reasons, right? But when you, uh, when you really break it down, it's, 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 there's a sense of elevation. And I think, you know, there, there's a camaraderie there. Yeah. But, but no one turns around to you at any point and says, hey, you know what? You should get into business. No, there's nothing, there's nothing that no, suggests No, no one's going to do right? that, not even family, you know. So I've had family tell me I need to get a real job. Yeah. And it's like, what is a real job? What, me working in fucking Tesco's? Mm. Like, no, I'm yeah. good at what I do. And I believed in what I did. And I always wanted to prove, I guess, to my parents that yeah. I could make something out of it. Parents are the best to show and prove to, right? Uh, yeah, like, so that was a like driving factor. Biggest catalyst that I mean, you could I, ever have. I got arrested quite a few times and they always sort of, not blamed me, but said that I, you know, influenced my younger brother into graffiti and, and you know, him getting arrested and What's stuff your younger like brother that. write? So he used to write Mites. Mites, M-Y-Z-E. Like, okay. okay. And, um... <laughs> I just feel like, I don't know, I just wanted to be good at something. Yeah. So it was, it was worth it. Like yeah. I, I would look at Subway art and, and those spray can art. Those mm. were the, like the Bibles. Mm. I raised them from the library. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, that I wanted to be like that. And mood was also like, show, we, we had a keen interest in, mm. in graffiti. Um, I think that was the thing because Everyone had a tag name from skating and mm. stuff, going to the uh, PlayStation, skate park and things like that. Oh yeah, hell yeah. Um, so I grew up, I had a childhood in London and I was uh, heavily influenced by my surroundings and what, if, what was going on at the time. Yeah. So, like, everybody had a tag. And Why a... Ipswich? So I've moved to Norwich. Norwich. It's not okay. far from Ipswich. Yeah, it's just down the road. 
Um, Ipswich had a, a festival recently, I think. Uh, but I went to the South End City yeah, Jam. Yeah, big up South End. So, yeah, yeah check that out. South End City Exo Jam. I've got crew, a video yeah. on my channel as well. You didn't want to leave, man. You were like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to leave, man. It was good fun. Um, so, shout outs to um, Stir and Ecto. For, big up Stir as well. Up, another, another conduit of uh, awesomeness. I had a podcast. great time. It sort of showed me, like, opened my eyes to what could be done. I would like to do a street art festival in Norwich where um, That'd be so it'd sick. be similar to South End City Jam. And I would yeah. like to invite everybody that was there, basically, to come to Norwich. Like, South End's been a big talking point this year. I've got to shout out, I've got to shout out Stir and Ecto. Yeah, so because they, there's been a lot they, of talk about it this they year. They like, put a lot of work in, to yeah. be honest. They worked really hard um, building all the, the boards here. and everything yeah. and coordinating people's paint. Yeah. There was paint there. There was there's sorting love, people love. out paint, yeah, yeah. you know. That's cool. Like, you, you're getting invited to someone's city and then they're hooking up the paint and um, offering you wall space. Yeah. I managed to do a, a piece of street art on the high street, which was good fun. Wow. And meet loads of artists that I like. So and you know it's going to last for a while. Because yeah, that's, it, I think it was like two weeks, they said, because we were unsure of like how long it was going to be there. Um, but yeah, they said two weeks and that's that long Tizer enough for me. That Tizer piece was crazy. The one yeah, that the Tizer whole... smashed it with the Ooh. maze. Like, Big up Tizer, yeah. Uh, was... Apparently he had an exhibition, but he wanted to make the exhibition like what he made uh, South yeah, End. Yeah, so he did you know exhibition. how good South End was. Like... Tizer smashed it, man. He's a G. Big up Tizer, man. Yeah, big up Tizer. Big up Tizer. Well, as, as we know, we're celebrating the dub battle, which is going on this weekend. Um, what's your favourings? <laughs> what's your favourings? Who do you so, reckon? I can't say who's going to win. Like, I didn't enter it to win. Um, like, I just feel people will choose. The people will decide. Yes, and I think indeed. That's, that's the main thing. You decide for who you like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's what social media is, isn't it? It's all about <laughs> likes. And that's the other thing. As an artist, you have to do what you do, not for likes, but yeah. for yourself. Because so important, there'll man. be times where you ain't getting likes. Yeah. and um, Can't be liked it, all the time, people. That's not entertainment. No. And also, when you get to a certain level, you start noticing you get less likes. Yeah. So you have to be a very strong, strong-minded person mm. to deal with social media, and it's I think a cause of a lot of mental health in people. Of course, it is. Absolutely, it is. I think we all feel the pressure because we see other people doing this and that, and we got to do and be on the same as them. And mm. yeah, it just fuels the fire, basically. Yeah, it does, doesn't um, it? Well, it feels oh, we, a fire because sometimes it can be in a good way, but yeah, I, I get where you're I coming mean, from. You've I got do, to be it, able to manage it's it. It's helped me, like, with the spiritual stuff and just learning more about myself and who I am and my sort of um, psychology and things like that. So social media is good. I know who I am and I'm, like, a high-value person. Mm. I value myself. And uh, that's how you've got to be. Like, you have to have a, a good self-esteem yeah. and, and, and self-worth. Definitely. Yeah, 100%. From the, what was it, three years ago we did the podcast, it's been fantastic to see you come on in a way that you're growing, not just creatively, but spiritually and mentally, my brother. Yeah, and it's something I'm, I'm still trying to work towards with the spiritual thing, and I need to kick my vices. Mm. So Damn bloody vices, yeah, I swear I'm trying, to God. I'm, I'm only human. Uh, I'm regulating my drinks now. I'm pretty impressed with myself. Yeah, how I'm no, not really interested brother, in like, anymore. <laughs> alcohol is one you need to. It's the steer it's the away worst from. one, brother. It's the worst one. I get it because you're you're a social you're a social person and you're yeah. out there. Yeah. So it's very hard. Yeah. Um, but that is where the self discipline comes in. If you can control yeah. your mind and, and and have that control over your health and everything else, it all slots you can in. control your life. Yeah. And um, it's it's always the people that just lose control mm. um, and you've you got to try and steer away from that you've mm. got to regain control of your life and 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 the the, the drinks and drugs it's all a trap yeah cap so it. you realize it's all a trap to keep you stuck and you want to get unstuck so yeah. the less of that that you can do the, the better, better you'll be you'll find that there's people as well that will fucking do shady stuff to you yeah and you might feel a certain way about it, but you've got to be the better person. 
And um, if you're living the dream, mm. like you, you just got to put that that nonsense behind you. Just see people for who they are. And then, uh, yeah, just walk away from it, man. Just walk away from it. Yeah. A lot of like, noise I've been there. stabbed in the back, but, you know, that happens yeah. with work. Yeah. Like, people are shady, man. They'll still work from you. Mm. So, yeah, you just got to watch out for who you let around your circle and just keep your circle small. Yeah. That's it. That's all demographics has got to say. So, peace out. That's the sign-off right there, people. My brother, it's been a pleasure hanging with you, as always. Always a fucking pleasure. Hopefully that was good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, hold that. Yeah, we're out like it was out of fashion, all right? We're in trouble. We've got things to do over here, all right? Uh, big shout out to Sharon Carers. People have been clocking. Um, hey, and listen, crime don't pay, neither did I, all right? Don't talk to an I wouldn't. Dems, tell them what's yeah. up. Peace. Stay safe. Yeah, stay safe. Easy. Mm.